Decentralized physical infrastructure, aka DPIN, has been one of the biggest crypto narratives of late. This has left everyone wondering exactly how much potential this niche has and which projects in it they need to pay attention to. Well, a recent report has the answer. That's why today we're going to summarize that report and tell you what its findings could mean for the crypto market. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. Some of the cryptos in this niche will 100x, so be sure to watch until the end. The report we'll be summarizing today is titled, quote, State of DPIN 2023. It was published by crypto research firm Masari earlier this month, and we'll leave a link to the full report in the description. I'll also note that we've already covered some of the projects it mentions for our Coin Bureau Club members. We'll come back to that later. But if you can't wait, the link is in the description. Now, the report begins with a brief explanation of what DPIN is. As I mentioned in the introduction, DPIN stands for Decentralized Physical Infrastructure. As the term suggests, it describes a category of projects that use crypto-related incentives to build out physical infrastructure of all kinds. These include decentralized Wi-Fi, decentralized computing clouds, decentralized cloud storage, decentralized mobile networks, and much more. And besides crypto-related incentives, what almost all DPIN projects have in common is that anyone can contribute if they have the right hardware. As the authors note in the report, this can make some DPIN solutions more efficient, resilient, and performant than their centralized equivalents. As a cherry on top, DPIN projects have the potential to innovate and evolve much faster than their centralized equivalents due to community involvement. This is why the authors argue that DPIN projects have an inherent flywheel, that is, a positive feedback loop. The larger and more powerful a DPIN project becomes, the more it gets adopted by both users and the providers of the services it offers. This makes the DPIN project even more powerful, and so on. The authors note that DPIN will add $10 trillion to global GDP over the next 10 years, which sounds incredibly ambitious. It's also not entirely clear how they came up with that calculation. In any case, the authors then go on to provide a list of industries that DPIN is already disrupting. These include crypto projects related to digital maps, energy grids, home internet, food delivery, ride sharing, and apparently even pets and livestock. Of course, these projects are in very early stages. Now, from the author's perspective, crypto projects in the deep in niche can be broken down into six categories. These are compute, wireless, energy, AI, services, and sensors. The authors count over 650 cryptos across these six categories with a collective market cap of more than $20 billion. Not bad. Not bad. Naturally, these deep in projects have attracted quite a bit of capital from VCs. To put things into perspective, the top 10 deep in projects alone have raised $1 billion so far. I say so far because many of these deep in projects have raised money even after their ICOs and their mainnet launches. For context, it's quite rare for a crypto project to raise a significant amount of money post-ICO. When it does, it's typically a sign that investors have a very high confidence in the project's potential. Given the potential of the deep in niche in general, it's no surprise that it's seen lots of post-ICO funding. And, in case you're wondering, the 10 deep in crypto projects that have raised the most money so far are Filecoin with a $250 million raise, Helium with $250 million, Render Network with $100 million, Fetch AI with $75 million, LivePeer with $50 million, Really with $35 million, HiveMapper with $25 million, Andrea with $25 million, Braintrust with $25 million, and Dymo with $20 million. Phew. And by the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, folks, be sure to smash that like button to give it a boost. Are you ready for deals? 
Are you ready for trading fee discounts? Are you ready to save some money? If the answer is yes, then you're ready for the Coin Bureau deals page. Yes, Coin Bureau brings you the very best deals and promotions in all of crypto. You won't find offers like these anywhere else. Discounts on the best hardware wallets. Trading fee discounts of up to 60%. Ugh. Coin Bureau's brand new altcoin focus subscription service. The Coin Bureau deals page is even better for you than this piece of succulent, protein rich, nutritious grilled chicken. Ugh. Head on over to coinbureau.com forward slash deals or click the link in the description below. Don't delay. Check out the Coin Bureau deals page today. These deals are so hot, I need to cool down. Yeah! Now, here is where things get interesting, so pay close attention. Although there are almost a thousand crypto projects in the deep in niche, almost all of them appear to be launching on a handful of cryptocurrency blockchains. These include both layer ones and layer twos. As you might have guessed, Solana appears to be the most popular layer one for deep in projects. The authors note that this is due to a combination of its high speed, low fees, and apparently its Rust programming language. This is a bit surprising, given that building on Solana is, apparently, very difficult. More about that in the description. I digress. Now, in terms of Layer 2s, the authors highlight Caldera and Eclipse as two popular picks for deep in projects. They note that this is because these Layer 2s allow for customization and allow deep in projects to combine the best of both worlds, Ethereum security with Solana's execution, in the case of Eclipse. Obviously, there are a few deep in focused layer ones too, and the authors showcase two Iotex and Peak, the latter of which has yet to launch, but is already generating a lot of buzz. As for Iotex, meanwhile, some of you might recall that the US military was testing its blockchain for health monitoring back in November 2021. Crazy stuff. Now, if you don't understand why this is so significant, take a second to consider that it's ultimately these layer ones and layer twos that will benefit from deep in adoption. So, if you can't or don't want to go down the rabbit hole on every deep in project, then you can just try and pick the biggest deep in chains, not financial advice, of course. And you're in no position to give financial advice. That said, the potential of these deep in chains, as well as deep in projects, fundamentally depends on the demand side of the equation. And this is what the authors unpack in the second part of the report. They start by underscoring that deep in revenues are driven by utility, not by speculation, like most cryptos. That's certainly up for debate at this point in time, but, well, let's not go there. Anyways, the authors note that deep in projects often require you to buy and lock or burn their associated tokens in exchange for the decentralized product or service they're offering. I'll quickly note that this gives them a similar profile to crypto coins, which are used to pay for fees and for staking, etc. Now, the authors estimate that deep in projects generate over $15 million in annual on chain revenue, a figure that stayed steady during the bear market. Now, this isn't much when you recall that there are hundreds of deep in projects. So, this then naturally begs the question of which deep in projects are the most profitable. What's strange is that the authors don't seem to provide a clear answer here. For what it's worth, though, LivePeer happens to have a dashboard called the Web3 Index, which tracks the revenue of some of the largest deep in projects. It looks like decentralized storage and compute are bringing in the most dough. Speaking of which, the authors remind the reader that many of the largest deep in projects have started to become platforms that offer a wider array of decentralized products and services. Here, they put Filecoin, Helium, Render Network, and Bittensaw in the spotlight as five examples of such platforms. The authors then break down the three components of the compute category they detailed earlier. 
These components are storage, compute, and retrieval. The authors note that some deep-in projects in the compute category, including Filecoin and a cache network, provide a, quote, full-stack experience. Regarding storage, the authors point out that decentralized data storage could be one deep-in use case that achieves mass adoption. So far, though, most decentralized data storage use has come from other crypto projects and protocols. The silver lining is that it means more decentralization in crypto overall. Note that you can learn about what decentralization really means using the link in the description. Moving on. Now, regarding compute, the authors point out that this component has the opposite problem of storage. Whereas there's lots of decentralized data storage and not enough demand, there's not enough supply of decentralized computing power and no shortage of demand, comparatively speaking. Regarding retrieval, the authors point out that this is the most difficult part to decentralize while remaining competitive. This is because a centralized retrieval protocol called Cloudflare already powers 20% of all regular websites, apparently at zero cost. It's going to be hard to monetize alternatives. This ties into the next deep in category the authors detailed earlier, which you'll recall is wireless. Not surprisingly, the total addressable market for decentralized wireless services has been growing exponentially. This is simply because the world is becoming more interconnected by the day. Funnily enough, the wireless category of DPIN seems to have its own name, DY, which presumably stands for Decentralized Wireless. The authors likewise break this category down into three components, mobile, fixed internet, and Wi-Fi, with Helium being front and center given its rapid growth and adoption. For reference, Helium recently partnered with T-Mobile to launch low-cost mobile plans across the United States. Anywho, the next category the authors analyze is actually one that was not on their original list, but rather one that is apparently attracting lots of attention, and that's data sales. The authors begin by stating the obvious. In an increasingly digitized world, data is everything. This is why they're bullish on deep-in projects like HiveMapper, which incentivizes people to, well, map their surrounding environment, like a decentralized version of Google Maps. The authors also note a few more niche deep-in projects in this category, including one that tracks noise pollution in a decentralized way. This relates to another category the authors detailed earlier, and that's services. They note that there are two types of services from their perspective. Horizontal services, such as decentralized marketplaces for freelancing work, and vertical services, such as decentralized ride-sharing protocols. They then pivot to talking about another emergent deep-in category, and that's, quote, vertical ads. Oddly enough, though, they don't have much to say about it. And it's also odd that they don't mention the Brave browser in there. It's a similar story for energy deep-in projects, which are likewise very nascent. So this brings us back to the supply side of the equation, which is the focus of the third part of the report. The authors start with a spicy statistic. There are over 600,000 deep-in nodes and counting. As you can see, nodes for Wi-Fi map lead the pack, with over 200,000 coming from just this deep-in project. The authors note that the number of DPIN nodes has been growing fast, and that's because DPIN projects are slowly but surely solving the scalability issues associated with expanding physical infrastructure. The result is that DPIN products and services are becoming cheaper and better. By now, you'll know that the build out of this physical infrastructure is being incentivized with crypto, specifically tokens given to those providing said infrastructure. Logically, the tokenomics of these tokens are also part of the supply-side equation, and the authors note that there are three strategies at play. These are supply-based tokenomics to incentivize growth, demand-based tokenomics to incentivize efficiency, and a combination of both. The pros and cons of each of these three approaches are noted here. The authors also note that certain approaches have worked better for certain deep-in projects. For instance, they note that deep-in projects which require lots of hardware benefit the most from supply-based tokenomics, 
as it essentially involves showering contributors with tokens. Conversely, deep in projects that are mostly software based can grow by offering points that may someday turn into tokens. Sweatcoin comes to mind here. Anywho, when it comes to how to value all these different deep in projects, the authors provide some peculiar advice. Pay close attention to both the market cap and the fully diluted valuation. They explain that this is because deep in projects have lots of VC investors who can suppress their price action. Put differently, the demand for certain deep in products and services could be offset by the supply coming from early investors in the projects. The authors seem to imply that this is an issue that lower quality deep in projects will face and claim that most early investors will sell when they're 5 to 10x up on their bags. This just goes to show you how important it is to do your research when it comes to crypto, particularly cryptos in relatively new niches like Deepin. As I mentioned earlier, not everyone has the time or the will to go down all these different rabbit holes to see which contain gold and which contain, well, not gold. You'll remember, though, that one way you can hedge your bets is to bet on the actual blockchains that will host all of these deep in projects. The problem with that approach is that the returns aren't likely to be nearly as large compared to if you had identified the actual deep in projects with 100x potential early on. This, though, is where the Coin Bureau Club comes in. It contains weekly in depth reviews of altcoins that were selected and voted on by our members. It also includes a detailed breakdown of the promising coins and tokens that members of the Coin Bureau team hold, as well as the ones we're considering accumulating. And best of all, we have an exclusive members Discord channel where we discuss narratives and niches, such as Deepin, as well as the promising crypto projects in them. So if this sounds interesting to you, then consider becoming a member by using the link in the description. We'll see you in the club. Now, this brings us to the most exciting part of Masari's Deepin report, and that's the key themes for Deepin in 2024. According to the authors, the first theme you need to watch out for is the intersection between Deepin and AI. They predict that Deepin AI will be bigger and better than centralized AI in one to two years. The second theme you need to watch out for is the intersection between Deepin and meme coins. The authors admit that this sounds silly, but they point to the Solana phone bonk airdrop as proof that the two can be paired, and how it foreshadows physical infrastructure being incentivized with meme coins. I guess our recent video about meme coins becoming a serious crypto niche was right after all. More about that in the description. Now, the third theme you need to watch out for is the intersection between Deepin and zero knowledge technology. That's because with highly scalable zero knowledge technology, Deepin will be able to conduct a so called vampire attack on Web2, basically, steal its users, content, and activity. Now, the fourth theme you need to watch out for is similar to the third, and that's the intersection between Deepin and gaming. This theme can be summarized as basically GameFi on steroids, as it combines the crypto aspects of gaming with the real world infrastructure of gaming. Think VR headsets and such. The fifth theme you need to watch out for is the intersection between Deepin and privacy. It goes without saying that most of this centers around decentralized virtual private networks or VPNs. I'll quickly note that we covered one promising decentralized VPN for our Coin Bureau Club members not long ago. Now, the final theme the authors say you need to watch out for is a bit bizarre, and that's the intersection between Deepin and Asia, as in the continent. The authors predict that, quote, multiple top 10 Deepin projects will come from Asia, most of which have apparently yet to launch. Interesting indeed. And now, my friends, for the big question. What do the findings of this deep in report mean for the crypto market? Well, the answer is more important than you think. In short, it's evidence to the idea that the crypto narratives and niches which perform the best during this bull market will be non-financial in nature. 
This is something we argued in our recent video about crypto narratives, and it's something that's actually been mentioned by some deep in projects we've covered for our Coin Bureau Club members. It seems that many crypto projects are aware that financial use cases will be met with extra scrutiny. Deepin, on the other hand, has a much lower risk of rubbing a regulator up the wrong way, and the proof is in the pudding. The fact that many Deepin projects are listing on app stores around the world, and the fact that some of them have partnered with well known companies and brands, is proof that it's a safer niche. To be clear, though, I mean safe from a regulatory perspective. From an investment perspective, the deep in niche is likely to be extremely volatile due to its incredible potential and the early stages that most of these deep in projects are in. There will be many 100x tokens, but just as many will go to zero or worse. In the longer term, though, it's clear that Deepin is here to stay, and this is going to have a profound effect on crypto adoption. You see, up until now, crypto's primary demand drivers were pure speculation. With the emergence of Deepin and other non financial niches, we could finally see some actual adoption. The consequence of this will be that the average person will feel more comfortable using and investing in crypto. And that will eventually lead to even more adoption and investment. Some would say that the end game of crypto is to decentralize everything. If that is indeed the destination, then we are on the right path. All we're wondering, though, is how the centralized equivalents of these products and services will respond. We suspect that it will be the same response we've seen to DeFi and other niches that have tried to disrupt the existing financial system unprecedented regulatory pushback, mainstream media FUD, etc., etc. The difference in this case is that it will be much more difficult to crack down on DeepIn. If you think about it, most DeepIn networks are already more decentralized than most cryptocurrencies. This will make them extremely resilient to attacks from centralized entities and prove that crypto is here to stay. And that is all for today's video. So if you found it informative, smash that like button to let us know. If you want to stay informed, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. If you want to help inform others, then take a second to share this video with them. It is the future after all. And in all seriousness, if you're planning on trading deep in cryptos or perhaps already are, then you need to check out the Coin Bureau deals page. It's got trading fee discounts of up to 60% and sign up bonuses of up to $50,000 on the best crypto exchanges. The link is down in la description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Guy, signing off.